Good evening. We welcome you to Emmanuel as we're gathered here, still in the season of Epiphany, but for only just a little over a week more. Uh, Lent will be starting uh, February 17th with Ash Wednesday, and uh, that will bring us into the whole season of Lent. Uh, so we prepare ourselves for that. Uh, but for today, we are focusing on who Jesus is for us and for the world. Uh, but just a couple of announcements before we get started. Uh, a new item we have uh, developed is a weekly newsletter. Uh, it was sent out on Friday electronically. It was mailed uh, to a few people who, aren't, who don't have that capability. Uh, and it should have come to you uh, titled, Emanuel News. And uh, it's, it's an item that uh, gives announcements and uh, a highlight of the weekend services and also uh, events during the week. Um, if you have um, items of interest to uh, have as an announcement to the church, uh, please submit those to uh, the office. Uh, you need to do that. Uh, they need to be into the office by Wednesday at 9 a.m. to make the cut. Uh, so any announcements, please send to the church office. You can send it to my email address, and we will get those passed on. But uh, just a way to uh, stay connected and get information out to, uh, to the church. Also, uh, Chuck uh, has an announcement to make uh, about an uh, event at uh, Camp Silka, uh, and for you to participate, if you are so willing. Uh, Saturday, uh, February 27th, is uh, the uh, Woodcutters Retreat at Camp Silka, which is a Lutheran camp just north of Springfield. And uh, uh, every year they recruit uh, people from all over the Central Illinois District to go up there and get all the firewood ready for the whole camp season. And uh, it's, it's, a, it's a wonderful opportunity to fellowship with the guys, uh, whether you're a chainsaw operator or a lost one operator, log splitter operator or not, uh, we always need people to help carry the wood and uh, there's all, all kinds of work for uh, non-machine operators to do as well. But uh, uh, it's a one day activity, it's Saturday morning through Saturday evening. However, uh, Pat and Air, my son Chad and I are going up Friday, we're gonna stay in the bunkhouse so we can wake up, we'll be there and get started uh, in the morning. Just uh, something to think about. We'll have to All right. Thank you, Chuck. If you have any interest in being involved in that project, you can talk to Chuck for more information and, uh, and details. But for our service tonight, uh, you can see the theme on the door. It's Jesus for all people. As we look at uh, who Jesus is for us and his desire that all people come to him through the gospel of salvation. We uh, begin by singing our first song, Today Your Mercy Calls Us. Thank you. 
we stand to worship. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Our God comes to us today to call us to repentance and faith, to salvation and life. We come before God's throne then and confess our sins together. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, for the times we have tried to keep our faith a private concern, failing to be all things to all people, for the sake of your kingdom, but instead seeking your blessings only for ourselves, have mercy on us. For the times we have not loved our neighbors as ourselves and have neglected prayer and concern for the community in need around us and for people throughout the world, have mercy on us for the many faults and failings that are known only to you. Lord, we ask you to forgive our sin and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. For Jesus' sake, amen. Upon this, your confession, I, as a called and ordained servant of Christ, announce the grace of God to all of you. And in the stead and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all of your sin. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. O oh God, our loving Father, as we run and grow weary and walk and feel faint in this earthly life, of trials, troubles, and temptations. Raise us up by your grace, that we be invigorated by your word and the hope affirmed through Christ's empty tomb. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. Our first reading this evening is taken from St. Paul's uh, first letter to the Corinthians, chapter 9, beginning at verse 16. For when I preach the gospel, I cannot boast, since I am compelled to preach. Woe to me if I do not preach the gospel. If I preach voluntarily, I have a reward. If not voluntarily, I am simply discharging the trust committed to me. What then is my reward? Just this, that in preaching the gospel, I may offer it free of charge, and so not make full use of my rights as a preacher of the gospel. Though I am free and belong to no one, I have made myself a slave to everyone, to win as many as possible. To the Jews I became like a Jew, to win the Jews. To those under the law, I became like one under the law, though I myself am not under the law, so as to win those under the law. To those not having the law, I became like one not having the law, although I am not free from God's law, but am under Christ's law, so as to win those not having the law. To the weak, I became weak, to win the weak. I have become all things to all people, so that by all means possible, I might save some. I do, all, I do all this for the sake of the gospel, that I may share in its blessings. Do you not know that in a race all the runners run, but only one gets the prize? Run in such a way as to get the prize. Everyone who competes in the games goes into strict training. They do it to get a crown that will not last, but we do it to get a crown that will last forever. Therefore, I do not run like someone running aimlessly. I do not fight like a boxer beating the air. 
No, I strike a blow to my body and make it my slave, so that after I have preached to others, I myself will not be disqualified for the prize. This is the word of the Lord. I invite you to stand for the reading of the Holy Gospel. Our Gospel reading is taken from St. Mark's Gospel, chapter 1, beginning at verse 29. As soon as they left the synagogue, they went with James and John to the home of Simon and Andrew. Simon's mother-in-law was in bed with a fever, and they immediately told Jesus about her. So he went to her, took her hand, and helped her up. The fever left her, and she began to wait on them. That evening, after sunset, the the people brought to Jesus all the sick and demon-possessed. The whole town gathered at the door, and Jesus healed many who had various diseases. He also drove out many demons, but he would not let the demons speak because they knew who he was. Very early in the morning, while it was still dark, Jesus got up, left the house, and went off to a solitary place where he prayed. Simon and his companions went to look for him, and when they found him, they exclaimed, Everyone is looking for you. Jesus replied, Let us go somewhere else, to the nearby villages, so I can preach there also. That is why I have come. So he traveled throughout Galilee, preaching in their synagogues and driving out demons. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise you, Lord Christ. We respond to God's word by confessing our faith together. We use the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated as we sing our next song, Hail to the Lord's Anointed.
grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Our message today is Jesus for all people. And we want to consider that topic as we look at when one is for all. So I was thinking about that. The movie The Three Musketeers came to mind. Remember that movie? That book? Uh, the Three Musketeers. The, the slogan of that group was all for one and one for all. It was a call for unity and a common purpose. And their purpose was to protect the crown and the people of France. Protect them against the schemings of usurpers and power-grabbing nobles. We need that musketeer spirit in our land today. One that expresses unity and common purpose together. We don't have that. Our nation is so divided with the rank political schemings of our ruling class. I mean, has there ever been such an us versus them mentality? I mean, look at it. There has developed a, a complete intolerance for any opposing view. I mean, not only not wanting to work with the other side, but vilifying them and condemning them for the positions they hold. Now, churches and Christians can fall into the same judgmental trap as well. And there's too many examples of that. Where churches look at each other suspect and with condemning eyes and seeing them as competition instead of collaborators. This should not be. What do we do? What do we do in this divided world in which we live? We do the only thing we can do. We look to Jesus. And what do we find when we look to Jesus? What we find is that in Jesus, we find one for all. God's unifying plan for this world is his plan that he worked out in Jesus the Christ, the Savior of the world. And it was the one and only plan that existed. What we find in this plan is that salvation and eternal life are found in no one else but Jesus Christ. This is an exclusive plan. There, are, there is no option B to this truth. Jesus says it himself when he proclaimed, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Jesus proclaimed, this is eternal life, that they know the only true God and Jesus Christ whom you have sent. That's the only way. The apostle wrote, salvation is found in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given to men by which we must be saved. Those words of God are pretty clear. All roads will not lead to heaven. And there are many counterfeit paths out there in our world. But only one will bring you to salvation. The one with Jesus. Now, in our world today, you may say, well, that's not fair. What about all those other people who are fervently believing what they believe? But it is fair. And what's fair about it is that this exclusive salvation is provided completely by God. For all people. He doesn't restrict it to certain people. He, he has provided it for everyone. This is the beauty of the gospel message. 
Salvation is for all. And it's been accomplished for all. We hear this clearly brought out in Scripture. For God so loved the whole world that he gave his one and only Son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. God has accomplished it for everyone. Jesus said it himself. He said, the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. And that word many means for everyone. And then Paul brings up the point, I am not ashamed of the gospel, for it is the power of God for salvation to all who believe. The power to believe is, has been given. has given to all through this gospel message that they can believe and know Jesus and have eternal life. Jesus is for all. And it's there for the taking. Now, what do we do with that? Well, as people of Jesus, as believers in Christ, we understand that in the gospel of Jesus, we are called to be all for one. That the gospel compels us to this unity of purpose. St. Paul understood this unity of purpose. He writes about it in 1 Corinthians 9. He says this to the church, For when I preach the gospel, I cannot boast, since I am compelled to preach. I mean, woe to me if I do not preach the gospel. Now, if I preach voluntarily, I have a reward. But if not voluntarily, I am simply discharging the trust committed to me. What then is my reward? Just this, that in preaching the gospel, I may offer it free of charge and so not make full use of my rights as a preacher of the gospel. Though I am free and belong to no one, I have made myself a slave to everyone to win as many as possible. That's what Paul saw as his purpose, a unifying purpose, not only for Paul, but for all believers. That in, that in our life as Christians, in our functioning as Christians, that we may win as many as possible to Jesus. Now, how do we, how do we live that out in our life and as the church. Well, I, I think it begins by seeing the need that exists in our world around us. And that need is for Jesus to know salvation, to know the hope that is there in the Savior, and in the Savior only. We are living in such a hopeless world. I, I caught a little segment where they were talking with Larry King. Larry King is, is touted as one of the great personalities of radio and TV. And he shared very clearly and boldly, I don't believe in an afterlife. This is all there is. What a hopeless attitude. What's the point of living? What's the purpose of living? If this is all there is, How many people that surround us in this world are functioning with that same hopeless, purposeless mentality? 
We have a message of life. Life beyond the grave. Life that's meaningful and purposeful and eternal. And we need to be sharing that and showing that to a world that's sitting in darkness. The gospel compels us to do this. I, I love the way Paul talks about that he's compelled to preach, to, to, to share this message. You know, if he doesn't, woe to him. We need to have that same urgency within ourselves. Because what else does Paul say here? That the gospel compels him to do what? To break down every barrier or hindrance to this purpose of sharing salvation with others. To break down every barrier or hindrance. Paul says that he became all things to all people for this very reason. Again, listen to what he says. To the Jews, I became like a Jew to win the Jews. To those under the law, I became like one under the law, though I myself am not under the law, so as to win those under the law. To those not having the law, I became like one not having the law, though I am not free from God's law, but am under Christ's law, so as to win those not having the law. To the weak, I became weak to win the weak. I've become all things to all people so that by all means I might save some. I do all this for the sake of the gospel that I may share in its blessings. Paul became all things to all people. He was willing to set aside uh, anything and everything that would stand in the way of him sharing the gospel with someone else. How is God calling to, do, to take that same attitude today in how we, how we function as church? Are we willing to look at what about us has a tendency to throw up a barrier to other people? To, to look at the ways we function as, as, as hindrances to letting others our voice of the gospel be heard and received by those outside the church? Are we ready to become all things to all people that we might save some? It, what is the gospel compelling us to do and to be as followers of Jesus in this world that we find ourselves today. The gospel's calling us to change and to prepare ourselves for that change. And I love what the Apostle Paul uh, does here. He uses the, the imagery of running a race. And in using this, he's saying that the gospel compels us to run this race of faith purposefully and faithfully. He says, do, not, uh, do you not know that in a race all the runners run, but only one gets the prize? Run in such a way as to get the prize. Everyone who competes in the games goes into strict training. They do it to get a crown that will not last, but we do it to get a crown that will last forever. Therefore, I do not run like someone running aimlessly. I do not fight like a boxer beating the air. No, I strike a blow to my body and make it my slave so that after I have preached to others... I myself will not be disqualified for the prize. Run in such a way to get the prize. Paul says that it's critical 
that we as followers of Jesus keep our eyes on the prize. And what is that prize? The prize is the lost soul of every individual in this world. That's the prize we're after. The prize that, that Jesus described as that, that one little coin on this widow's uh, wedding veil that had fallen off and gotten lost. And she spent her whole time searching for it and, and sweeping the house and, 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 and doing everything necessary to find that one little tiny coin because it was precious to her. It was the prize that she sought. prize is that, that one sheep that is strayed away. And the shepherd leaves the 99 by themselves and goes and searches for that sheep and does so until he finds it. And then he returns it, rejoicing that the lost had been found. We need to understand what the prize is that we're working for and keep our eyes on the prize. And then once we have that in focus, we need to train ourselves to run our best in this race to gain that prize. Training ourselves in our attitudes, in our, in our words, in our speech, in our actions? You know, just where is your attitude and your thought? Is it with the Lord? Is it following his will and his desire? Or is it focused on yourself? And, and what about your words? Do they reflect the spirit of Christ that dwells within you? Or do you still let too many words escape that belie just the opposite? And what about your actions? Are they showing love and compassion? Or do they tend to reflect hate and resistance. Paul says, train yourself for the race you are called to run. Train yourself to subject yourself to what is good and godly and right and holy. And to accomplish that, you need to stay connected to Jesus. Going to him with your fears, with your failures, with your doubts and your worries. And confessing them to the Lord with that wonderful assurance that he forgives you and he cleanses you of everything unrighteous. The Lord desires to prepare you to be all for one as he is one for all. Now, are we the church of the musketeers? Probably not. But we are the body of Christ in this place. And as such, we are here to work to be one for all and all for one. When that one remains Jesus. 
May God empower us so to be compelled by the gospel for the sake of his church. Amen. Heavenly Father, we pray for all people in their need, for the church of God everywhere, that the Lord Jesus would continue to work among his people to forgive sins, to deliver from death and the devil, and to strengthen and preserve them in the one true faith unto life everlasting. And that his people always remember why he has come as Savior from sin, for the life of the whole world. We pray for the kingdoms of this world, that God would guide rulers to act with justice and integrity in the service to all those entrusted to their care, and that when surrounded by violence and uncertainty, your people might trust in your unsearchable wisdom and cling to your promises of rescue in Christ Jesus. We pray for those who grieve and those in need of healing and deliverance this day. That God, who heals the brokenhearted and binds up their wounds, would grant them relief and preserve them in the hope of their steadfast love in Christ Jesus. For those who suffer from chronic illness and long-term suffering, that as Jesus healed the mother-in-law of Simon Peter, God would give power to the faint, increase the strength of those who have no might, and preserve them in patience and the faith that in Christ they will mount up with wings like eagles and run and not be weary and walk and not faint. Heavenly Father, we lift up to you Barb Nordeen as she still struggles with her uh, health condition. We pray that you would grant her strength and healing as she seeks more therapy to resume her mobility. We pray for Carolyn Meesman as she continues her her battle against the failings of her body. Continue to give her strength and endurance to meet the days ahead. We pray, Father, for this vaccine and its distribution that you would continue to bless the efforts of all involved, that the, the vaccine could be more quickly distributed and more and more individuals inoculated for protection against this virus. Father, we pray your blessing on these efforts. And Father, we come to you praying for our nation here and its divided leaders. Father, we pray that you would pour out your spirit upon all those who hold office this day, that you would lead them to embrace a spirit of unity, a spirit of cooperation, a spirit of working together for the good of all. Father, change the hearts, change the minds of those involved that your will may be done. Into your hands, Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who has taught us to pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Lord God, Heavenly Father, we come before you this evening desiring to receive the gifts and blessings that you have promised to us, and now here offer to us in this precious sacrament of Christ's body and blood. We ask you, Lord, to open up our heart and our mind to you, that we would in true faith what you receive, what you offer to us here, the forgiveness of all of our sins, the strengthening of our faith 
and our life in you. Bless us now through these means, in Jesus' name, amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the same night that he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body which is given for you, this do in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink you all of it. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is poured out for you for the remission of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Come now, receive the body and blood of your Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of all your sins. Amen. We stand for the blessing. And now may this true body and blood of your Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, strengthen and preserve you unto life eternal. And now go, confident in his grace, in his love, in his mercy for you, empowered and compelled to go and share it. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, amen. Please be seated as we uh, sing our final song, The People That in Darkness Sat. 